my name is Allison Heitman. I'm the marketing communication manager here at Sloan. And I just wanted to start by telling you a little bit more about the company. Actually, October 18th, we're going to be celebrating Sloan's 110th year anniversary. We started uh, the products in um, 1906 with the Royal uh, Flush Valve, so a manual flush valve. That's what we're known for. Um, again, we've had this product since over a century, and um, in today's ever-changing uh, world where we feel like we need a new iTunes or iPhone app every year, uh, we've had products that have been in, uh, still in use today in downtown Chicago. So we're really proud of our heritage. In order to stay innovative, we've continued to have new products. So in addition to the innovative flushometers, we've also had products such as hybrid urinals, sensor faucets, as well as sink systems. All of those have focused on design aesthetics, sustainability, and water conservation. We're really proud of our water conservation efforts here at Sloan. The first uh, Royal Flushometer, we've come a long way since then for sustainability. We used over six gallons per flush originally, and nowadays you can use as low as 1.1 for a closet or with a urinal, an eighth gallon to even a waterless option. So we've had a lot of innovations with water conservation. Sloan um, is fourth generation Chicago-based family-owned business. Uh, we have three co-presidents, Jim, Graham, and Kirk Allen, as well as uh, their father, Chuck Allen, who's the executive chairman of the board. And in fact, in 2015, Sloan had another um, iconic partnership with the Chicago Cubs. So we've been in Wrigley Field since the beginning. Uh, our commercial products are throughout Wrigley Field. They're also in Sloan Park, which is the spring training facility in Mesa, Arizona. So, and recently in 2015, Sloan products were also available in the rehab of the clubhouse at Wrigley Field. So now that clubhouse is the largest and most water efficient uh, facility in Major League Beast Baseball. Sloan's the official water efficiency partner of the Chicago Cubs, and we take that um, partnership on water conservation and sustainability very seriously. So we also have products uh, that are innovative, such as sensor faucets. In fact, uh, Sloan was one of the innovators in sensor technology for glossometers as well as sensor faucets. We're actually the first company to have fiber optic commercial sensor faucets. So throughout the years, we've continued with the innovations and still continue to manufacture a majority of our products right here in this facility, which will go ahead and take everyone on a tour of the facility now. So we'll have uh, Jason lead the tour as we go into the operation production side. Hi, guys. My name is Jason Mike. I'm the director of manufacturing here. What you're going to see is you're going to see many of the different aspects that goes into manufacturing flush valves and other plumbing products. We're going to start off in our polishing department. Um, there's a machine shop where it gets rather large, but I will show you different stages of the machining elements within our assembly department as we get to our production line. As you can see, we stage material in anticipation for the process to start. You'll see machine products on our left as well as our right. As we get into the polishing department, you're going to notice that we do chrome plating on site. Not many manufacturers in the country still do plating within the US, but we have to prepare each piece of metal that we are going to plate um, with a specific shine or luster. This gets it and makes it so that you see, whenever you go into a public restroom, you'll see that bright shiny surface of our chrome plating. We have to prep the material. What you're gonna see here is you're gonna see a part that actually has been machined, but does not have any polishing done to it. Thank you. It will actually go through this automatic machine. And when I say automatic, all the operator really has to do is he has to load the part and unload the part. But in that process, there's more to it. He has to make sure that, one, it's aesthetically appealing. What does that mean? 
That means when our customers buy a product, they expect to get a product without any nicks, scratch, dings, or any other blemishes on them. So what you're going to see is you're going to see him actually put the material through the actual operation. It goes through a, ten, a set of 10 heads that actually have cotton wheels in them that actually acts as a polisher buffer. And one of the things you're going to see, we saw this product. Now I'm going to have him set the next one right up here. And what you're going to notice is you're going to notice the contrast between the two. If we were to plate this, you'd get a heavy, dull surface finish that wouldn't be very aesthetically appealing to our customer. But as you move it over and you'll see this one, you'll see that the lines that were on this are no longer present. This is actually ready for our plating process. We are now going to walk over to our plating process. And one of the things I want to tell you about our plating process, it is 100% fully automated. And what does that mean? That means that all we do is present parts onto the racks and the actual machine takes it through the entire process. Our plating system roughly runs roughly two hours. In that two hours, it will travel just over a half a mile. As you can see here, we are presenting the parts to the actual racks. These racks will then be carried overhead, fully automatic, fully automated, and then actually enter the machine on the other side of this wall. We'll get to that in a second. But as you can see, when you go through a plating process, you'll see that we have the highly lustered polished parts, as well as the plating process is all chemical and electrical driven by electrical current. As you can see, there's a brass part on top of a metal prong. That metal prong acts as the conductor for the plating process so that we can adhere the nickel and the chrome to it. Correct. Now we're going to walk. Now this is the going into the plating, so in the raw state polish. Now I'm going to show you what it actually looks like when it comes out of the plating department or actually out of the plating machine. You're going to notice that it went from a like a brassy color to a highly chrome luster. And actually we have some right here coming out of the machine. Now that same body that we just saw on the polishing side, it's a slightly different variation to it. But now you'll see when we were at it machined, we then had it polished sitting on that cart. This is what it'll actually look like coming out of the plating process. As you notice, the machine actually loads it and unloads it automatically. We plate, or the plating process itself, the actual tanks, it's made up of 34 different tanks with various chemicals um, from acids to cleaners to chrome to nickel uh, solutions. And one of the things is, is that what, when you get into sustainability, not you have to be very careful because of the EPA. The EPA controls everything that we would put into a water stream, allow into our environment, and we pride ourselves in being a fully encapsulated waste treatment facility in this building. What does that mean? That means that we treat every bit of water that actually leaves our building, we treat so that it, does, it meets all the EPA requirements. As you can see, there's various different sizes going throughout our entire process. We play probably, I would say, a couple hundred thousand parts a day. So as you can see, we get a rack coming out every 40, roughly around every 39 to 40 seconds. And these are just different products that we'll see down the line being installed within our products. So now we're going to make our way to the assembly department where I'm going to show you basically two different things. I'm going to show you one of our newer products. And when I say newer, within the last 10 to 12 years, but it's all automated and it's fully electronic. So whenever you go into a restroom and you walk up to a urinal or a toilet, and when you're done and you walk away from that, and that flushes is the product that we're going to see now. After that, we'll go into the actual manual versions that the Sloan valve over the last 110 years was actually built on that platform. So as you see, you'll notice that we have material throughout the plant. This material is staged for prior operations, whether it be our stamping operation, uh, we have material storage, that type of stuff. So you're going to see that all of this is in, in anticipation for the next operation, whether it be a finishing operation, a polishing operation, an assembly operation. 
we are now going to be right around this corner. We're going to be entering our assembly process. Our assembly process consists of valve packaging, valve assembly, as well as all of the sub-assemblies that go into an end product. What do I mean by sub-assemblies? We have these satellite areas that will pre-kit uh, various components that will go into the box that the plumber will then install. One of the things is we have to be very careful with our products because they are chrome-plated. Well, everybody asks, well, why do you have to be careful with them? Because brass is a very soft material. Brass can nick, sting, and scratch very easily. So what we have to do is we have to ensure that when we ship a product, it is actually contained inside the box so that none of the parts really hit each other so that we don't get a customer that comes out into the field and says, you know, I've got this part, it's got scratches all over it, or it's got dings all over it. We want that product to actually look just as good at coming out of our processes when the customer gets it. So as we walk over, you're going to see our assembly department that does every flush valve that we support is done within these four walls. I'm going to walk you over here. This is our, what we'll call our Optima products. Our Optima products, again, are the electronic flush valves. One of the things that we do is in improvements or um, the lean environment is we want to put these sub-assemblies closer to the operation. So before, this used to be ran on a long bench. And now we've actually taken it and shrunk it down so that they are making product for this line immediately. So it's not like we make it and then it goes sits down. It actually gets made and then it gets consumed onto this product line. As you can see, we have three individuals. They actually package a product every roughly every 50 seconds to a minute. So as you can see, it's a highly repetitive product, um, but this is our, our number one electronic product. This is also the number one selling electronic product in the marketplace when it deals with flush valves. So as we walk around, I'm now gonna take you to the platform that Sloan was built on in 1906. That is the Manual flush valve. Manual flush valves are still our largest selling flush valve today. Um, the world has not gone fully electronic yet. We're hoping it does, but there are still installations out there that don't need to have an electronic version, so they stick with the manual. The manual product started, I think, in 1906. They, William Elvis sold one. In 1907, he doubled his sales and sold two. And from that point on, the next 108 years is... Um, why we represent one of the global leaders in the flush valve manufacturing business. As you can see, each one of these lines represents a different product line that we are actually building, whether it be our royal family, our regal family, our gem family. We have roughly, I believe it is, about 13 different product families that we package on any given day. As you can see, these you saw some of on the older um, items you might have seen, we have older racking. On these newer, uh, this newer line, you'll see a whole different concept of the actual material handling or the, um, the racking on this line. And this is one of our newer lines that we've actually done multiple Kaizen events on to improve the output within this line. What does that mean? That means we come out and we study what each individual operator does, what is the process, and how can we, one, remove the waste that they are doing that is unnecessary, or how do we redistribute the work to each individual to balance the line? Because we might have one operator who's producing or actions take 30 seconds, the other ones take 20 and 20. Well, what we want to do is we want to say, okay, if I can reduce that 30 down to 22, the next one's at 22 and the following one's at 22, we actually decrease and increase the output that we get. Now, one of the things you'll see is we did not only do we package and just put everything in the box? We also label. We also produce our um, anti-tamper-proof uh, labels right on the line. We used to have it so that all the labels would be presented to the line, and then they would actually just keep applying them. Now we actually, as the order is coming out, we've realized that because labels are not cheap. They are expensive, and we try to look at any cost savings element so that when they print, they are printing right when they are using. So this way we don't have extra labels laying around or that or somebody rips one or that type of stuff. Now what I want to get into is actually one of our products. As I said earlier, we wouldn't be able to get into the machining environment because it's too loud to hear. But what I want to do is I want to show you the various stages of our products. 
as you can see, these are just some of the different body variations. As you can see, this is a, a casting. This is our raw material. We actually pour these in our foundry in Augusta, Arkansas, and we run these back and forth on a truck every single day. It's about a six hour round trip. Uh, they go to Mount Vernon and then they switch trailers and then come back. As we bring our truck to Mount Vernon, you're gonna see right over here is why we consider ourselves a 99% recyclable brass manufacturer. As you can see, this is just one of the elements is the byproduct. As we machine these products, all of this stuff that we take off of this generates this chip. This then goes back to our foundry, gets remelted on a daily basis, and then is re-poured into new castings. We do that every day. So not only is it the chips that go back, if we have a product that doesn't meet specification, we will actually send that product back to the foundry for remelt. It gets remelted and then gets brought back into a new product that we will actually machine again. So as you can see, these are the various stages that these are the multiple facets of manufacturing. So most people look at a flush valve and say, oh, that looks great, but they don't understand what goes into it. As you can see, each one of these bodies represents a step within our manufacturing process, as well as a different area that each one of these has to be transported to. As we get better in manufacturing, we start low relocating, and what this is called is cellular manufacturing. So we get into these things that we'll put all of these multiple machining operations in a cell so that maybe one person or reduce the amount of people that can do it. But the output is actually up. So as we go over here, now you see all the raw material. Now I'm going to get into the actual product. This is still the original, basic original design that the Sloan valve was created in 1906. This is the platform. As you can see, then we've gotten different variations of it, depending on what is the market or the architectural designs that, um, whether it's building owners want. Um, these represent our diaphragm valve. If you look back here, these represent our piston valves. There is a slight difference. Our diaphragm valves are not very good in harsh water conditions. East Coast, New York, um, those types of things, third world countries. Our Piston valves are the most rigorous and can handle just about any water condition, whether it's a gray water condition, that's recycled water, um, salty water like we had in uh, New York, specifically after like Hurricane Sandy. Um, the water was so bad that a lot of our diaphragm valves were getting clogged. Now, obviously, you can unclog that rather easily, but our piston valves were still working rather good. So um, that really drives into what makes a Sloan valve. So now I'd like to take this opportunity to show you some of our state-of-the-art uh, testing facilities as well as answer any questions that you guys might have. So as we walk over, you're going to see other product lines that we do. Uh, not only do we man do manual or a battery operated, we also have a very um, high volume electronic flush valve. Uh, what does that mean? That means there is a power supply behind the wall and with the actual electrical wires go through the wall, and it's actually uh, flushed during, through a sensor. Um, so just like the battery version, this is just an electronic version of that sensor-activated flush valve. Um, you'll see, but not only do we do flush valves, we also have to have maintenance. Now, a lot of people overlook maintenance in general, but as a director of manufacturing, the one biggest thing that I look for is a very good maintenance department. They are the lifeblood that keeps our machines running so that we can remain profitable. I don't have people standing around. If machines are up, we're actually productive, we're making money. If machines are down because we can't fix them, then I am losing money as a company because we can't. Here is, as I talked in the lean journey, this is one of the things that we have prided ourselves on and have gotten better on over the last probably eight to 10 months. As you can see here, we do a lot of what we call KPIs. Those are key performance indicators. This drives a lot of the improvements that we're making. What are we working on to hold people to task to make sure that we are doing what is right for the business? As you can see, I want to point out this trophy over here is that we not only is going to work a, uh, a daunting task, but we also like to have a little fun with this. So we've created this competition and what we'll call success. That is the number one foundation for lean manufacturing is success. And basically it's housekeeping with safety. As a manufacturer, safety is always our number one operating priority. We want to make sure our employees are safe. Then it goes into the five S's, which is short. Yeah, we sort it. 
uh, we sweep, we shine, we um, standardize. standardize, and then we sustain. So those are the different steps. And what we did is we created a competition. We created and broke our entire plan out into multiple zones with supervisors responsible for each area. And then what we do is we have monthly audits that goes by, that go, and they rate each area on different elements of the actual success program. Then we actually, we calculate that, we give them a score, and then we crown a leader. Our maintenance department for two months running has actually been the number one in the success um, environment at Sloan. Um, and then the winner, so not only do they get the little trophy, we actually, once a month, every Friday, the winners of the actual success program get a pizza party. So we will bring the entire department over. We'll give them pizza. Um, they get about an hour for lunch. Normally, they go to a half hour. So we extend that a little bit as a token of our appreciation because it does take a dedicated effort to maintain a facility like this with everything that's going on. So now we're going to walk into our lab because, as Allison said earlier, we've gone from a platform that was a three-and-a-half gallon down to a pint of water. Well, the only way we can do that is by – Having test equipment that will allow us to validate as well as document and analyze our product to ensure that we're getting that volume. So as you can see here, these are a new state-of-the-art lab that we have just built over the last 18 months that now tests every one of our products. So we hook up a product out of the number of valves that we do. Every product that we make on those lines, five samples get brought into this lab on a daily basis to actually validate the flush volume. Once the flush volume is validated, then it, that product is released to our customers. If any one of these products fail during the audit, audit testing, we actually quarantine everything in our plant that is from that point on and actually hold it for analysis. So that's basically Sloan valve in a nutshell. Um, again, we are, not only do we do flush valves, you saw that we do faucets. We also do a fixture line that we don't do predominantly in here. We also got into sync systems, um, and that's more designer stuff. So as architects, and we're trying to get involved with more architects, they like to have these new, whether it's a new Cowboy Stadium or new Wrigley Field, they like to have these illustrious type faucets different than they used to have. It used to be the old sync models. Now they're coming in multiple um, minerals, uh, multiple recycled materials, all sorts of stuff that actually look like a fancy boss in sync system. So, let me uh, let me add a few things here to uh, what you've heard and seen so far. Uh, unlike uh, Jason, who's been here 20 years, I've been with the company only two years. So Sloan has been a great company for 110 years, and uh, the ownership as well as management here as a whole. We're intending to be around for at least another 110 years. So as the world is changing, we obviously have to change ourselves. So Sloan is going through a full-blown lean transformation currently. And some of the things that you've seen is a mirror or a testament to that. We've had the, the last couple of years plus, we've had uh, extreme improvements in our uh, quality uh, as well as into our overall uh, productivity throughout the plant. Uh, this lab, as you can see here in the, in the background, it has been built in the last couple of years. So it's an organization that is uh, dedicated to, uh, to keep on uh, the heritage that we have for 110 years. We are continuously investing in our people as well as into the company here. Uh, one thing that is uh, of, of importance is that in order for us to be able to sustain uh, for years to come, we're going through uh, creating training programs for students coming out of the schools or for individuals that just start right out of high school where they have an opportunity to be at Sloan from high school to entry-level positions all the way through a position like Jason has as director of uh, operations or myself as director of uh, manufacturing engineering. So one day, I was just one individual that started in uh, manufacturing is an entry level position. And here I am today. So if anyone is interested in manufacturing, certainly there is a career path that manufacturer has today. And with the technology improvements, with process improvements and lean manufacturing, there's really a variety, a very wide variety of uh, career paths that one individual can have. So uh, uh, unlike years ago where everybody was in manufacturing, 
uh, most people have sort of walked away from it, yet the opportunity in manufacture today is probably as good as it's been in the last 10 to 20 years. So there are so many openings. We're always looking for good people. We're always looking for individuals that want to grow and be part of a success story. So if you think for yourself, 110 years, how many companies are out there that you are aware of that's been around for 110 years? And how many companies really even think about what do we need to do to stay alive for another 110 years? Well, guess what? At Sloan, that's what we do. That's what we think. So we have four generations individuals that work within this organization, which is a testament to what Sloan has done and accomplished so far. And it's certainly the commitment that, that we have as an organization to move forward and yet make sure that another 110 years are coming. And we do that day at a time, we do that year at a time, and looking long-term goals as to how we can attain that for ourselves, for our kids, and for the United States. One thing that we haven't mentioned that maybe enough is Sloan is all made in America. So we make our castings in the U.S., we manufacture in the U.S., and we sell heavily in the U.S. as well as across the, across the globe. So if you're uh, proud to be an American and you're a hardworking person and you want to make America good for yourself and for all of us, certainly Sloan is a, is a place that can offer uh, anybody that opportunity to, uh, to succeed and succeed in a nice way. With that, I would say that we're... Uh, One last thing I do want to talk about is, as Daniel was talking about career opportunities, I want to give you guys a little insight into our demographic of our people out on the shop floor. Our average seniority of our employees is probably 21 and a half years. So take that into consideration is that that means there are people that are higher and lower, and majority of them are higher. We just had our first employee celebrate now, Hold on to this. We said we were 110 years. He just celebrated his 50th anniversary. So that is just about almost half the amount of time he spent at Sloan over the 110 years. Um, as well as not only do we have fourth generation ownership, we also have fourth and fifth generation employees out on the shop floor. So that would mean their great, great grandfathers started probably around in 1906. And then they're now here 110 years later. So the history, not only by our products, but by our uh, culture around here is exceptional. And that's what drives us, Daniel and I, as well as other managers at Sloan, is to want to ensure that we are there for maybe their grandchildren so that the next 50 years, we are still a sustainable business environment in the United States. So with that being said, uh, I think we're ready to take any questions that anybody has, if there are any questions. So uh, one is, what kind, of, what, what kind of different jobs are available at Sloan? So we, we saw, I, I know when I was watching, we saw a lot of assembly line workers, but can you talk about the wide breadth from the engineers, the assembly line workers, to the management, what kind of jobs are available? Well, on the manufacturing side, or just in the manufacturing environment, there are many jobs that are available from Product engineers, and what do they do? They design the next law platform of our products. We have manufacturing or industrial engineers. They actually do a lot of the machine layouts and um, the processes. So how do tools cut? We have tool designers. So majority of our tools that we use within our process are designed in-house. So we have a bunch of tool designers that will design tools that go into our specific machines. Um, we have tool and die operators. So they'll actually make the tools that we design. We have grinders, we have um, skilled setup men, we have op machine operators, we have CNC operators. So those are more of the ones that are the newer type of machinery. We have a highly skilled maintenance workforce. So these are people that one, do electrical on our machines. They can rewire our entire machines. They can remanufacture spindles. Um, uh, those are our machine repair elements. We have logistics operators, and what do they do? They pick and pack orders, they drive Jeeps, they load trucks, they unload trucks. Um, we have, have another area that we're getting uh, pretty heavy on to now is getting the automation. So there certainly this is more of a new technology and application for our processes. So getting into robots, getting into automatic assemblies, getting into uh, things that you have to design from scratch, and you're building custom machinery to be able to improve our processes, to improve our quality, and to be able to deliver the best product to our customers. So there's a very, very wide variety 
of opportunities from entry level jobs all the way to directorship. You know, uh, there's all these different uh, areas that are required and needed in order for us to be able to produce the product that we do to continue to innovate and to continue to improve the product apply proven technologies as well as doing some research and development on our own, as you see in this lab that we're doing here. So there's really uh, opportunity for all walks of life. And, and it's really at the end of the day is what does the individual want to do? Do you want to do something very simple and basic? Do you want to get into something more complex? Do you want to do it on the design of product? Do you want to do it on design of the, of the, of the process and anything and everything in between? So. Uh, in some ways, arguably, manufacturers has gotten a black eye or a bad name because, you know, it's sort of dirty. Well, that's sort of a thing of the past. We're moving much more away from that, and we're moving more into technology. As you can see, our product, that it's automatic flushes. we got electronics built right into the product, whether it be on the flushing side, whether it be on the faucet side. So technology is really taking a grip, and it's moving forward. Couple that together with the, with the lean uh, mindset with a lean process, and this is what helps us to succeed and continue to be a leader uh, in, in our uh, field. And just to expand on some of the opportunities, I'll just let you know that I have 13 direct reports that are manufacturing supervisors, and all 13 of them at Sloan Valve have started from the floor, whether it's a janitor, machine operator, and over the years have made their way into the management role of production supervisor. There's many, many opportunities uh, to start a loan at the, at the bottom, so to speak, and work your way up. It's up to each individual as to how much they want to get out based on how much they want to put in. All right, so another question. Uh, where, where exactly are you located? We are located in Franklin Park, Illinois. That is basically three blocks south of O'Hare Airport on Mannheim Road. Okay. And then um, is, is this facility the only one that makes the flush meter or are there other uh, manufacturing facilities? This is the only facility that will actually make the flush valve. As I showed you in our assembly department, that raw casting that we bring in, that is actually done in our foundry in Augusta, Arkansas. But right here in Franklin Park is our main headquarters, as well as our manufacturing facility for all flush valves distributed in the world. We do have other sites like West Newton where we actually manufacture our electronics. So we do that and we also have uh, the custom sink and, and, and commercial uh, product is done in uh, Arizona. So we do have other sites besides Sloan, but it is Sloan at Franklin Park. But Sloan, Franklin Park, it is the largest uh, site that we have and here's what we do produce most of our products. Great. Um, another question that um, has come through is, um, so there was... Uh, you talked about the assembly line and the 22 minutes versus the thir the uh, the 22 seconds versus the 15 seconds and so forth. So, what are the types of things that would interrupt your um, your production? Well, there's many different things that can interrupt it from material to people. So, hypothetically, somebody could go to the bathroom and walk off the line. We could have a um, a cover or any type of the components not be. 100% aesthetically appealing or what we'll call acceptable to put on the product. We might have in the manufacturing process, something might have got missed where the, the uh, quality characteristics on the threads uh, isn't up to speed, so we can't screw the cover on. We might have material shortages. Um, there's a whole gambit of different issues that could actually decrease the actual rate on which we actually assemble a flush belt. So let me add to that a little bit. The, uh, anytime you run production, you are going to run to some extent into issues. But just to show the commitment that we have as a company in, in the recent past to make improvements, we have taken our quality, we've improved our quality over 50% in the last two years from what we were before. So there's a, there's a dedication and a commitment to how do we make this Made in America product as best as it can be. So year over year, we're continuously analyzing and observing and looking at how do we make and drive that improvement. So two years ago, we, we did a little bit better than 50% of our quality. This year, we're on pace to doing roughly another 10% better, and we continue to drive that. And we have that commitment, so we make those improvements. So yes, we're not, we haven't reached perfection yet, you know, but we're going to keep striving for it. 
and we certainly are making uh, big strides uh, into that direction. Um, how, how many flush meters do you make in a day? Um, that I, as a company policy, I cannot disclose that information. No, oh, totally fine. Yeah, it, it's in the thousands. Let's put it that way. <laughs> um, good, uh, pretty good number. There's a lot of people who buy our product because they like our product. Right. So what is the most challenging thing about your job? The most challenging thing about my job is to ensure that everything runs smoothly. And what do I mean by that? I mean that everything is supporting the next customer. So when we talk customers, we talk external as well as internal customers. So since I control all the maintenance and manufacturing elements, I have to make sure that our machine shop is running to support our polishing department, our polishing to plating, plating to assembly. And if one of the actual individual components is short, that means nothing gets made. So trying to balance the 45 different types of components through the multifacet operations at different speeds, different rates, to try to get that all into the assembly process at the same time, as well as to ensure that the machines are up and running, is probably my biggest challenge on a daily basis. So, so let me add to that something that is very uh, uh, pertinent to uh, the individuals watching this video. Uh, one of the, the challenges that I have as supporting production for Jason is the talent of people that I need to bring in so that we can continuously grow and continuously drive the improvement. So we are always looking for the individuals that want to gain skill, the individuals that have some skills, and individuals that want to grow in a significant way. So currently, over the four departments that I oversee to support production, I have an opening in every one of them. <laughs> so I'm always looking, you know, as a matter of fact, for next year, we're saying, what could, what's the one thing that we're going to hit hard or go after. How can we give great individuals, the best of the best, to bring in and attach themselves to Sloan so we can continue to uh, grow Sloan and continue to make the improvements that we're looking to do. So on one hand, you've got the production side. On the other side, you have the skill and the people side that we need to continuously uh, drive to acquire so that we can continuously to grow and to, and to drive the improvements for Sloan and for our customers. What advice would you give to someone in high school that don't know what they want to do with their life? Uh, that's a good How much question. time do we have? <laughs> <laughs> um, the, the advice I would get is to try many different facets of work. Uh, because until you actually do something and find that mindset that says you really like this, you're going to just keep jumping and trying to find what is next. Um, I, in my personal opinion, in high school and into college, I did a lot of construction work. Well, I always liked working with my hands. Hard part is I didn't want to be inside and outside in a construction environment. I wanted to actually lead people and coach people into sustainable processes like what we're doing here. So it took me a while. I did a lot of different various jobs, but once I found that one, I knew that was what I was going to do, which then led me into my college existence and stuff like that. So, so let me add another side of that same <laughs> story, if I may. So one of the things that, uh, or, or the way I would ask the question would be, what would make any individual successful within manufacturing? For that matter, this would apply in other areas as well. So as a high school individual, as a student today, if you don't work hard to study, it is very likely you're not going to work hard once you get out of school. So working hard, doing the right thing, always looking to do your best and, and have a personality that you're willing to be coached, willing to learn, are huge characteristics that make anyone in any field, not just in manufacturing, successful. So when I look for individuals that I want to bring on board to sustain and to continue the success that Sloan has attained so far, and we want to drive to the future, I'm looking for those characteristics. So if, if you don't have enough of those characteristics, it is not too late. This is a time for you to say, okay, how do I make that change? Well, it's nice to have fun. It's nice to do all those things. But life requires a little bit more than just having fun. <laughs> so if you want to be successful, you can't be successful just by having fun all the time because somebody has to support that. And eventually that pipe goes dry. So, you know, building a good character and a good work ethic, and the willingness to do your best all the time. 
the, the individuals that work for me, I tell them from the day one, if you do your best each and every time, you would, you would win 95% of all your battles and you would be in the top 5% of the people in performance. But you've got to do your best. If you can look yourself in the mirror and say, I've done my best today, you, I guarantee you that you will win and you will be successful regardless what path you take. If you start at the bottom, you're going to work your way up to the top. If you do these things day in and day out, regardless who comes your way, regardless what somebody may say, hey, this is going to fail. Don't believe them. Just keep doing your best because we, people who manage, always look for that individual that is willing to do their best regardless if it rains outside or if it's sunshine outside. So that is a big, big thing that high school kids need to look at and say, this is what's going to take me to the next level. Awesome. That, that's actually a, a great way to sort of end this Q&A. Um, any, any parting thoughts at all? or Anybody who wants to come and visit, any student that's in, a, in the audience, if they ever want to come to visit or they're in Chicago, if they're not local here, feel free to give us a call. We'll give you a planned tour that's going to be a little bit more in-depth than what we were able to give you in the last half hour or so. Correct. Right. And just the final word is expanding on what Daniel said. Life is about hard work and discipline. Um, and you got to really try for what you want. Nobody's going to give you stuff. There is no entitlement. You've got to work for everything you have. So take that, put that in the back of your mind and say, if I want something, I'm going to have to do it myself. And, and you see two guys right here that have done that. Correct. So if we did it, you can do it. Excellent. Thank you both very much. Thank, thank you for all the people at Sloan that helped support us doing this uh, little tour. Um, and have a great weekend. Appreciate it.